She fulfilled her purpose in this life and she's brought us so much joy. I know we're not supposed to question God, but I question why is this happening to us? It took so long for us to get to this place. We finally get here just to share the news and family we're expecting all for it to just be snatched away from us. Everything has seemed so perfect. I was able to give my husband one of the best gifts he could ever ask for. From one week to another, it just got worse and worse and worse. I had hope that it would get better. I felt like we did everything right. Took care of my body, went to all my appointments, and this this happened. Why now? Why us? It doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem fair at all. I put up this facade like everything's okay. When deep down I'm just hurting inside. Not really knowing what to tell the kids or everybody around me. The decision I had to make. Do you hold on when they're telling you all these bad things about your baby? Health wise? Or do you go through with an abortion? Something that you never wanted to have to do in your lifetime. I'm finally ready to share the story of losing Nevaeh, which is our fourth daughter, our first together. Um, we were supposed to have her April of 2023, but we ended up losing her November of 2022, when I was 22 weeks, five days. It took us a while to conceive Nevaeh, at least what I thought was a while, but it ended up happening and we were just so elated and grateful. I came into the marriage with two kids and he came into the marriage with one. So we had three kids at the time and Nevaeh was our first together. All of our kids were healthy, never had any problems or health problems or anything of that such. So it never crossed our minds that anything like this would happen to us, which I know, I mean, anything can happen to anybody, but it was just like a shock when it did. We had to live out this experience. So I'm going to fast forward to where things started to take a turn. By this time, I was 20 weeks pregnant. And you go in for that anatomy scan, it takes about an hour. They look through like every nook and cranny of the baby. And my OB at the time, his um, ultrasound tech had mentioned something about fluids and how they were going to refer me to a genetic specialist because the baby's fluids weren't looking good. And I'm like, oh, fluids, that's not nothing major. And then they also mentioned that the baby had IUGR, severe IUGR, uh, which was the baby being on the smaller side. Um, which I never had any kids that had this diagnosis and it didn't worry me because I had friends that had smaller babies. It wasn't, a, you know, anything that I thought I needed to worry about at the time. Because this was around Thanksgiving time and like everyone's schedules were crazy and booked up, my OB at the time, he didn't schedule me for that, uh, that genetic specialist appointment until two weeks down the line, which my nerves mm, couldn't handle two weeks. So I, well, we were seeing a midwife because with Nevea we were going to do um, a birthing center birth. Um, so I reached out to her and I told her the things that were going on and she referred me to someone that she knew, which got me in, I believe, that same day or the next day. So I went to that appointment and they did a scan themselves and I went in without telling them anything that was going on. It was just like, hey, could you just check on baby and see what you see? I didn't want to go in telling them what I had already knew. I wanted to basically get a full second opinion of what they thought was going on. So they're doing the scan and it's taking a while. It's like another whole hour ultrasound. Um, and then afterwards she sits me down and like I could just tell the look on her face is not the best news. So she tells me that the baby does have severe IUGR and within that day she had already lost a couple ounces, which was like so crazy to me. Like, how is a baby losing weight in in the belly? Like, it, it didn't make sense. But I'm like, okay, I'm listening to what else she has to say. And she goes on to tell me that the fluid does not look good. The baby looks like basically almost suffocating in a sense. Um, and that the brain, they didn't have a term for it, but I will mention what they diagnosed her with later. But basically that her head shape was small and 
the cells were not connecting. It was just like things that just weren't aligning up. So they offered me something called an amniocentesis, which basically they'd stick this long needle through your stomach, pull it out, and they're able to test that and see, uh, give you like some answers as to what's going on. Maybe or maybe not. It's not a guaranteed, but I also know that comes with like r more risks. And at the time, I didn't want to face those risks, being that the baby didn't have fluids as it was. So I took all that information in. My husband wasn't with me, so I came home. I told him the news, and things just got worse. After sharing the news with my husband, I felt like I was just, this black cloud was just hovering over me. I felt like I understand that people process everything differently, and this was definitely a trying time for us, for us to go from so happy to be celebrating our first baby to talking about the loss or the possible loss of losing this baby or letting this baby go. I feel like my husband had already made his mind up, and it was just a lot for me to take on at the time. I was so emotional, and I just wanted nothing more than to be, bring Nevea Earthside. So I'm like, okay, before we decide to do anything, I think it's best that we get a third opinion or maybe a fourth. I wanted to make sure that what these doctors were telling me was accurate and right. After that, I ended up seeing a mid, not, not a midwife, sorry. My midwife had a referred me to someone, a really good uh, genetic specialist that worked at UCLA, Dr. Krakow. I'll never forget her, but God bless her heart. She helped me through so much. I went to see her and she just, she reminded me so much of my grandmother, which was so crazy. She had this just pure heart and this pure love. Like I felt safe with her. I get to this appointment and I'm still hopeful. I'm still holding on to that little ounce, that mustard seed of faith that I have. Like God's gonna turn this around for me. Um, I get into that appointment, she's scanning, she's scanning and just, oh, the excruciated, what felt like an hour felt like hours on end days. Like it just felt like I was living a, a bad dream that I just couldn't wake up from. And once I felt her hand, and my grandma used to do this, which is why she reminded me so much of her. She would, she grabbed onto my hand, she's like, oh dear. And once I heard that, my heart just fell, I'm like, oh. That little bit of hope was like stripped away, but I felt a sense of peace in a sense because I felt like I was surrounded by people who genuinely cared about me and that she did. She took really good care of me and my midwife was there because my husband was working and she was right there beside me. Um, my, my OB did leave me high and dry. It was around um, Thanksgiving time, as I had mentioned, and he did not follow up with me. So I was just so grateful that we had our midwife there to guide us and to give us these connections that she had to help us through this. And she basically said the baby has microcephaly, which did have to do with her brain and like the formation of her head. And she was still losing weight. She was still not where she was supposed to be and the fluids were just... We, no one could understand. I didn't have answers. I agreed to the amniocentesis test with this uh, Dr. Krakow who worked with UCLA. And we did that test and it didn't come back with anything. There was no reason as to why this was happening to me. I know that usually the body would reject. And that's why people have miscarriages because something's wrong chromosomally. Just the makeup wasn't right, but for some reason my body decided to carry Nevea all the way through that point. So now here we are. My OB has told me something's wrong. The first specialist that my midwife told me that something's off, and it just started going downhill. When I seen the UCLA specialist, she was Nevea was not getting better, and. As I'm coming back to report all this to my husband, he's just like, and I was so upset. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was so upset with him because I felt like we worked so hard to, to get her here, to even be pregnant. And I wanted him to fight a little bit more. 
I had to respect that his opinion and what he felt I had to take that into consideration and I had to also deal with the facts of what these doctors were telling me I ended up going to that genetic specialist that my OB had referred me to and that's when we ended up finding out it was a girl and the only reason why we found out it's a girl is because the way that appointment went at that point I told myself if I walk into this appointment and I'm still hearing bad news. I think this is my sign that things are not going to turn around for us. And Navea was, she was not doing well. Even them scanning her was so hard to scan her because she literally didn't have no fluid around her. Like a small pocket between her legs. Like, I couldn't even believe what I was seeing. I have never seen this on an ultrasound. Usually babies are filled with water around them in between all the nicks and crannies. And she didn't have that. This appointment, my husband was there with me to see firsthand. And she basically gave us the same diagnosis that everyone else did. And we asked the doctors what was her chance of survival if we chose to do nothing at all. And she basically said her quality of life will be very poor. And that literally, whew, that literally broke me to the core. Like how, why is this happening to us? Not only that, but it's just like, why allow me to get this far into my pregnancy where I have to decide whether we keep going and let it play out. She becomes a stillborn or she does make it earthside and she only lives a couple days or just terminate the pregnancy altogether. So when I knew that those were literally my options, we decided to find out what she was because we did want to keep it a secret and we found out we're having a girl and the best name for her was Nevea. In my heart, what decision I had to make. And I really like went back and forth. I prayed about it. I'm like, why put me in this position that I need to make this decision? I don't want to make the wrong decision. But I knew in my heart what I needed to do and I felt like it would have been selfish of me to keep her here knowing that her health was already declining in the wound. I seen it day after day, week after week, that she just was not getting better. Did I want to bring her here earthside? Of course I did. Of course, absolutely, 100%. But did I want what I wanted for myself and my family to put everybody else around me in this? I just thought, how would this affect my family if I didn't go through with it? How would it affect my marriage? How would I be able to show up for my other kids if Nevaeh did come earthside, knowing that she was going to come with all the complications she would have if she did live? Did I want to bond with a child who might survive 24 hours a day a week see her breathe and then allow her to leave me to me that felt selfish and to other people it was like you can't abort. God doesn't like abortions. But of course I didn't want to have an abortion, but I also didn't want to bring a baby here who is going to have a poor quality of life, who's going to have to fight day in and day out just to live and to see her already struggling in the womb and to see that outside the womb with tubes and 
this wasn't just a, a Down syndrome diagnosis or anything like that. It was literally the way her brain would function. She probably would never eat, never. No, I couldn't do that. I felt like that would be so selfish on my part. And at that moment, that's when I decided it was time for me to let her go. I didn't have no, no understanding as to why God will put me in this position. And I didn't understand it at the time. I literally had two kids out of wedlock with people who were not good for me and they came healthy. And I finally find someone that I married that loves me wholeheartedly and our union is just so beautiful and we wanted the kid. This was our first planned kid and for this to happen it just seemed so unfair. Very unfair. It didn't make sense. We literally brought three healthy kids to the world and ours for some reason wasn't healthy until this day after all the tests we did we still never got answers as to why this happened and I think that's what hurts the most at least in the beginning I used to feel kind of ashamed that I chose to terminate that pregnancy but I'll tell you about the God we served I made the right decision for our family and for Nevaeh, most importantly. She fulfilled her purpose in this life and she's brought us so much joy and literally allowed us to take a step back into reality just knowing that because things are linear in, in some aspects of your life doesn't mean that it's always going to be that way. She allowed us to just pause for a while. She allowed me to enjoy the moment, like literally be in the moment with the kids that I have. We get so caught up in this day-to-day -day life, work, school, all these things. And sometimes when my kids bring me a paper from school, hey, look, mom, it's I'm tired. It, it showed me that. I need to be focused. I need to be present in those little bitty moments because those are the things that we tend to overlook or take for granted. And after losing Nevaeh, it literally gave me, it just opened my eyes to so much more. That type of loss hurt so deep. And I'm like, I have these kids right here in front of me that sometimes I don't cherish as much as I should. They're healthy. They're here. And... They need to be loved. They need to be seen. And from then on out, it was like a light had switched. I just feel like God needed me to to take that pause, to take that breath. And that time when we lost Nevaeh was around Thanksgiving time, as I keep saying. It allowed me to take a step back from work, from baking, from all the things that I do as a person as a wife, as a mother, as an entrepreneur, even as a nine to five worker, it allowed me to just soak up those moments. And it was just so beautiful that it was holiday time that I was able to just bond with my children and just allow them to love on me and me to love on them. And really for me and my husband to come together and it allowed me to see a more emotional side of him and just allowed us to connect in ways that we hadn't done in so long, which was so beautiful. And it was all because of our sweet girl, Nevaeh. All because of her. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about her. I share this because when I was searching for answers, when I was looking for testimonies, when... I just needed somebody to relate with. There wasn't nothing out there for me. 
And I just felt like God had isolated me and I was alone. And I didn't want to be alone. I wanted to be with someone who could understand what I was going through. But I'm like, maybe he's using me as a vessel to share this message. Because I'm sure there's so many other people that have been in the situation that didn't want to make the choice that they had to make. But it was the best choice for their life, for their family, and no one else's. Or maybe they don't share because they're scared of what people will say. Oh, you had an abortion. But for me, I look at abortion in a whole different light now. This is not, this was not an abortion because I was being reckless and just didn't want the baby. This was literally the health of our daughter, what her future would look like. And I don't think just in the now, we think in the future. If I was to leave here today and I would have brought Nevea Earthside, who would care for her? Who would care for her in the way that me and my husband would have cared for her? And honestly, nobody. That's just the reality of it. And I didn't want that for her. I did not want that for her. So, I share this to tell you that you're not alone. I feel the pain you're going through. I understand the pain you're going through. And I'm standing right here with you to tell you that there should be no shame in your decision. At the end of the day, you have to do what the, what's best for your family. You have to do what's best what you feel in your heart. And at the end of the day, the God we serve, knows your heart, knows your intentions, knows what's made for you. And that's why I find peace. I no longer feel shame in saying, yeah, I've had an abortion, but for all the right reasons. And my sweet girl, she knows that her mom loves her. She knows that her dad loves her, that her siblings loves her. And we did it because it was best for not just us, but for her as well. Because everyone deserves a great quality of life. And it was out of love that we made the decision we made. And God allowed us to go through it. And three months later, we were blessed with another little girl. (laughs) Well, we got pregnant with another little girl, I should say. And when that happened, it was just like God had it all planned out. Not only did he give me a little girl again, he blessed me with her on my birthday. And I can't think of nothing more special than that. Then God says, I see you. I feel you. I feel your pain. I love you. This... This process, this experience, this trial, tribulation is, is, was never meant to hurt you. And I just want to share that with you guys. You know, we go through so many things in life and sometimes it feels like our backs are against the wall. Or God doesn't love us or why, why, why? But I promise you, he has a reason for everything. And because of what I went through with Nevea, like the way that I cherish my kids even more and love on them more and don't take the gift of life just so nonchalant, you know, we get caught up in our everyday and I don't take it lightly. And I just pray that whatever decision you make, you find peace in that. And just know that Jesus loves you and you're not alone.